That's wonderful. Hello, everyone. Uh, Mike Quinn here. And uh, hopefully we've got uh, in the studio. I know you're here. I'm just uh, checking you. (laughs) He's just checking me. I'm just checking. Looking nice. Billy Davis. The legend Billy Somebody Davis. to um, get you into the studio after all these this time. Because it, 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 it was a long time ago you were going to come in. But uh, you're here now. And it that's was with Jet, wasn't it? It was. But now I have bought you a nice thing because we couldn't bring Jet. So no. I bought you the film. Okay, Billy, what, what are we kicking off with? Ah, well, we, we did the 50th anniversary tour with Jet and the Rapiers. Now we recorded a song that you haven't heard. Um, and it's called, it's appropriate because the lyric is back in our rock and roll days. So um, what we're going to do now is uh, play one of yours, Billy. And w- what have you lined up for us this time round? There's a song called What You're Gonna Do, which goes back roots, um, Chuck Willis, <coughs> which is at the beginning um, when I was recording these, I really wanted to do this kind of stuff. But I was <coughs> contracted to the record company, so... Sometimes you had to do the songs that you were given. You started off off at Decca Records, didn't you? Yes, yes. Yeah. No, I remember you from Decca Records. I can't rem- remember the first time I met you, but I it was at Decca, I believe. Was this because I went back to Decca the second time when Michael Aldred produced the latest stuff? Did Michael produce <coughs> you? Oh yes. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, yeah. God, he was a card. Michael Aldred, for those who don't know, he compared uh, Ready, Steady, Go. And he wrote, he wrote in the magazines and Fab Mag and all those magazines. No, I, I do remember Mike. We went on holiday. He didn't tell me he was gay. <laughs> 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 you think I'm kidding? Surprise! Yeah, surprise! Guess surprise, what, Mike? surprise! Get, 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 get. <laughs> yeah, guess what? I went, no. Yeah, and uh, it's quite a lonely place, Guernsey. It's a good job I'm butch and strong. Oh. Uh, oh, so... Uh, yeah, it's a laugh. But I did, I did like Mike. He was funny. He didn't talk to me for three days after I knocked him out. His mouth was still. No, it was <laughs> yes. When I first signed with Robert Stigwood, we're going back to Mike San and the Joe Meek days. Um, Robert was producing John Layton then with Joe Meek. Of the very first thing was Johnny Remember Me with the film that um, Mike, that John did. You know. Um, Harper's something, some which broke the record. It was a thing on the radio, TV. And then John was in the middle of doing The Great Escape with Steve McQueen. So they then, we can get to this a bit later, but that's when they found Tell Him. They were in America and it was a cover of The Exciters, but they found the track and bought it back. Mm. For me. So that's uh, John, another John, John, John Layton's <coughs> been in it. He's sat in that very seat you're sitting in. Yes. We did a good show with uh, John Layton. There's parts of him still there, I can tell. No, he took himself with him. He's under right, the whole, chair. Whole, Come out in a minute, John. He took, he took <laughs> him the whole self with him. And, no, he was very good because he's done so much. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, Billy Davis that time and What You Gonna Do. Uh, that, that, that's coming from uh, a compilation album. You, you, you're looking great in that striped suit there, Billy. I know. That was all the talking about the... In fact, the soul stuff. There's a load of stuff on there that I did with Keith Powell, I think, isn't there? Keith Powell. Maybe. Uh, it doesn't actually say, um, but I believe you. <laughs> All right. So um, there's a funny little live section there, uh, live at Edmonton. Um, what at the beginning? When I was a little sprite there, um, when it all started to happen with, tell him and. Um, yeah, because um, let, let, let me see. I, I think no, your your first hit wasn't tell him. It was. Uh, yeah, you would know better than I. <coughs> will I what? W- w- will I what? Yeah, that went to number 18. That was the follow-up to... Um, I've got it here. Well, we'll, we'll play that in a minute, because... Uh, will I what? What, what, what did what, Wendy, um, <laughs> Wendy Wendy Richards... Wendy did Come Outside. Come Outside, that was it. And Mike and I were both signed to Robert Stigwood, and Wendy didn't really want to go out and work live on the road, so I... Stigwood at that point was grooming me for and looking for the right song for me. So I've done at that point, I was at fashion school and I was at having drama coaching, a confidence thing. Yeah, it was quite amazing, Stigwood, I hated, when I think about I it. I hated the lipstick, didn't I? I used to go on the catwalk and these like six foot models and I'm trying to do this. And then you'd have a makeup 
lesson and then I'd have to report back to Robert how did you get on today and and when I walked out of the fashion studio I you know because then you the lipstick was indelible then you know really and I used to go in, in the toilet up the road or wherever it was and wash all the lipstick off and when I by the time I got to Stigwood he said have you been eating jam again I said no I didn't like that whole um makeup thing and it's like I've never liked all the it's not me fishtaily dresses and were you with Stigwood and when he had Shirley the Bassey, it's not it was never me when he had the office on the Edgware Road yeah yes yes you won't believe it that, that, that was above um, Willoughby's tailoring. But you worked downstairs. I, I, did, <laughs> I, I, did, I, did. I love it. No, I was, <laughs> no genuinely, I'm, and uh, I was a junior. Uh, and I went from shop to shop to shop. Cause oh, Willow, that's Willoughby, wonderful, isn't it? It, it was at the time, yeah. And uh, it was great training. Uh, and uh, I, I remember I was um, taking the trousers, you know, you do all those sort of jobs. And, and I'm walking down the road, and John Lennon's, uh, John Layton's walking along. And, uh, you know, I was always a friendly sort of guy. And, of course, I recognised him straight away from Johnny Remember Me and all that. And I went, oh, hi. And he went, hi. And, he was all, and we were both walking back the same way. And, uh, and engaged in conversation. Yeah, he, he, he told me his offices were upstairs. Where I was like, oh, oh, funny thing is I work in the shop downstairs. And then I hadn't seen him from that day till when he and came in here. And you talked about it. We yeah. talked about it oh, when he came wow. in. And it was just amazing. And he, he was just so nice. And he was nice then. And I said, I, I remember you being a friendly sort of bloke, you know. And, you know, it was just friendly banter and all that. And, yeah, you know, like you do, you just... Yeah. He remembered every word. <laughs> I doubt it. But, um, yeah. There will be years. There will be times, yes, yes. Lots happened at Willoughby's Tailoring. My goodness. I mean, did you always choose your own songs? No. Or did... Rob, Robert, no, for no. instance. Oh, this this Angel of the Morning we did with Michael Ordred. It wasn't that was further on with the girls. And No, um, th- the thing is that when I look back now, because I've been working with Ian Terry of Matchbox, former of Matchbox, um, and we've written some things, and hopefully you'll listen to some of those later. Yep. Um, I probably realised at the time, now looking back, that I would have liked to have done more of the rock and roll things, you know, songs. Um, but they were constantly looking. You see, when I was with Stigwood, you still had, it was just before Spectre. It was um, Carol King was just coming along with, I think, with Little Eva. And he wanted me to cover the locomotion, but I said, I don't think I could compete with Little Eva and Carol King and difficult one and the locomotion, yeah. So, but I was listening to a lot of jazz things, Lena Horne and Diana Washington, and I wanted really to do jazz, but the early, which would have been the early rock and roll things. Yeah. So there was songs like "I wanna be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too." I didn't da, think. Da, da, I da, didn't. Da, da, you know, and I was learning all that stuff, and I wanted to go, and I did do the cabaret club in Manchester where Ella Fitzgerald <gasps> follow. I followed Ella Fitzgerald into the cabaret club in Manchester, but the agent said to me, "Billy, you're too young to sing jazz." So there was a mixture of all that going on as well you know well, when i interviewed helen shapiro she said to yeah. me she wasn't hurt enough well, let's get the wording right uh, she hadn't suffered enough to sing jazz but i or believe the blues, she, the blues like. something, something like that yeah but um yeah. I, I think she does now so maybe she suffered a lot more since i saw her and um she did mention that about you have to suffer to, to be able to sing like that <laughs> 